In our first debate in diabetes segments, we are weighing over-the-counter continuous glucose monitors. Are they data for all or disaster waiting to happen? Here to debate are Dr. Diana Isaacs and Dr. David Ahn. Our thanks to you both today. Thanks. Great to be here. Yeah. All I'm right. Talking about this Dr. Stuff. Isaacs, I want to get started with you. You say data for all. Definitely. What are the benefits to these monitors? There's tons of benefits. So people can learn in real time by seeing their data. They can see the effects of food, physical activity, stress, sleep on their glucose, and it can facilitate lifestyle changes. It also can help us with medication adjustments as needed. And in people that are using it that may have prediabetes or don't have diabetes, it can prompt us to get screened and perhaps even lead to diagnosis if needed. Dr. On, this sounds pretty promising. How could this end up in disaster? Yeah, so I think the promise of CGM for all is really uh, enticing, right? Uh, but I think the challenge is, is a lot of people, when you take out the prescribers out of the picture with these over-the-counter devices, you no longer have like that education, that supervision component to it. And these devices, they require a lot more uh, nuance and in interpretation than you might initially expect. And so I think when you talk about the audiences for these continuous glucose monitors, I think we would both agree that people with diabetes, especially people using insulin, these are immensely helpful tools. However, I think the farther you get away from that, when you start talking about prediabetes or in the wellness space where people don't even have diabetes, I think that's where you start to run into challenges. Um, and these, the difficulty interpreting the CGM data can potentially lead to confusion and misdiagnosis and potentially something horrible like eating disorders or you know, disordered eating. Dr. Ahn brings up a great point. What do you say to perhaps the lack of education surrounding these monitors or maybe people not being able to decipher the metrics? So first of all, the apps themselves are amazing. They actually have tons of education embedded into them. And I wish actually the prescription devices had more of this education because it's really good. It goes through the different factors that impact glucose levels and it describes what the target range is for a person with or without diabetes. When it comes to interpretation, I think we are overcomplicating it, okay? We don't need to be looking at all this retrospective data and like their coefficient of variation and their GMI. What we need is the person in real time. They eat two bowls of cereal and they see, whoa, I went up to 180. Maybe that's not the best thing. And the next day they eat a hard boiled egg and they see they barely went up at all. Like that's the kind of learning. It's really simple. We are just over complicating it. Dr. On, wouldn't you say that perhaps extra education, perhaps these foolproof apps would help mitigate any confusion that people might come across when it comes to reading their, their numbers? Yeah, definitely. And it's funny, I actually share that same opinion that I wish these app experiences um, for things like Stello and Lingo had those educational modules available for people with diabetes because they are really good. Um, however, I think the challenge is when you take out the prescriber, you're literally taking out the human supervision. And people when they're left to their own devices oftentimes they're googling things right so we both agree that you shouldn't be using a cgm value to diagnose diabetes but naturally what is someone going to do when they see that their morning sugars are typically running say 105 108 they're probably going to go to google search what is a fasting glucose of 108 represent and they'll be told by the internet that that's pre-diabetes and they might get concerned and seek medical attention. So I think I also agree with Diana in the sense that trend information is the most important, but I think when patients have the data themselves and they don't necessarily have the right supervision or the right education around it, they can draw very concerning conclusions left to their own devices. So I don't disagree. Like someone could see their, I don't know, they're like, constantly in the 50s or 60s and then google and be like i have an insulinoma oh no like i'm dying um but what i will say is i don't think enough hcps are prescribing this for their patients i know in the endocrinology space like Please. it's you know it's standard of care but in primary care it's unfortunately not and there's tons of people out there with diabetes that don't have access because they're not getting a prescription and now this empowers people they can go and get these devices and perhaps they'll show it to their hcp and that will actually facilitate more prescribing final question to you both your advice for somebody who might be considering the idea of utilizing some of these monitors I, I mean, I don't think they should avoid it. I, I do think it's a very powerful tool for education. I think it's just really important to understand the limitations of it. And like Diana said, I think the trend information is extremely valuable, but I think when you're looking at absolute numbers, um, you can get carried away. Um, and 
the reliability of these sensors, which we didn't really dive too much into, uh, is a little bit questionable when you're talking about people that are that glucose values are going to primarily range between 70 and 140 versus someone with diabetes where it might be 50 to 450. So these devices, I think, are still in their early stages of we're still understanding how to best utilize these devices in that non-diabetes population. Um, so there's still a lot of caution to be exercised. Final Final question to you, for somebody that is already using these monitors, should they live and die by what they're seeing on their app? No. <laughs> I think that I agree the trend information is what's super helpful. I'm so excited about all the potential. I mean, I think there's so many people with undiagnosed diabetes and prediabetes, and I see this as leading to more people uncovering their dysglycemia. And then also there's some other really interesting use cases, um, even things like pre um like early stage type 1 diabetes like the monitoring the progression that's really cool and i think there's still so much potential even in gestational diabetes and even though we have prescription devices approved sometimes there's barriers to people accessing it and so i like that this is just more accessible for all those people all right very hot topic clearly and we thank you both for your uh perspectives today thanks for having us thanks for having us <laughs>